All right, fellas, thanks for joining me. We'll start off with some pictures here of the front, kind of just sitting on the springs, working on the upper buckets and lower little spring holder deal. And I added that little piece to hold the spring in place. These are my first addition of the bump stops. Then this is the lower track bar mount here, a little cardboard engineering, and then we converted it to quarter inch plate and uh, no trouble with it yet. This is my upper mount at the axle, a little unorthodox, but she seems to be strong and holding up. And then this is the upper bucket. I wrapped it with eighth inch plate just to kind of hold it together and give it that lip. And it was kind of a pain, but it seemed to work out okay. I've been working on these upper spring buckets and you'll recall it was just kind of a piece of plate that was kind of hanging out here in space a little bit. There was a little bit of it. So I needed a lip, maybe, you know, something up the sides just to, to kind of make it look finished. And then I figured with the eighth wrapping it, if you will, like I had a hammer the hell out of it, but you know, I got it pretty good. And, um, but basically it's just going to, after it's all welded, it's just going to tie everything together and then add a little bit more, uh, you know, make it a little bit thicker, add a little bit more security. I was able to hammer to, the edges together pretty well. So I'll zip those up. And then when it's all done, I'll hit it with the grinder, clean it up a little bit, but I kind of like it. I like how it adds the, adds the lip all around. It's kind of got a little bit of a beveled look. And it's just, I don't know, something kind of cool to do. And uh, so next up, we'll start working on, I don't know, whatever else we got going on. So I've got my bump stop up in there. It's just tacked into place. You can see it there. It's going to get some gussets and stuff, but it's chilling. It's chilling above the pad right there. So this is actually lifting it up off the jack stand. So you could imagine with engine trans, stuff like that. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit closer to the pad. So I might need to adjust that perch down to the last hole and then uh, probably call that good. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is actually just let everything sit on bump because those are kind of soft. So I want to see how they look, but I really wanted to get the spring in here to make sure I had clearance and it looks like there's going to be plenty of clearance. So I'm going to do a little more flex testing. And we'll see what happens. Bump stops are going to be something like this. Uh, they hit the pad pretty nice. Tested this side. This side is, is good. This side over here, I mean, I think they both need to come down about a half an inch because... So this is actually lifting, lifting it off the jack stand. However, when that side of the axle is up a little higher, it will actually touch the frame right here so you can see where it's at so this side is sitting about ride height you know well the spacing i want from the frame and uh yeah so when this side's a little closer this actually touches the frame so we don't want that so i'm going to adjust them down probably about a half an inch or so an inch and see where that puts me so like i said i didn't i've never used these kind of bump stops and they're they're pretty soft i have some other ones i might switch to but Hey, we'll see what happens. Got out here this morning and switched up the bump stops. I have these other yellow ones that are, uh, they're a lot, a lot stiffer. So I put that on here. They don't, they don't deform like the other ones, which is kind of cool. Like they sit nice and flat on the pad. So I like that a little bit better. And then they don't compress as much. So that's cool. So I got it into my spot, my flex test spot where it would normally be touching and I'm about an inch from the frame. Sorry about that. I'm about an inch from the frame. I think I like that. I think I'm gonna live with it and I think my bumps are gonna go right here. So you give me your thoughts if you'd like, but uh, I think I'm gonna run it. I think it looks good. That's the, the clearance that I want. And now we can work on some shock mounts today. So hell to the yeah. We got one shock on. I'm, uh, yeah, when I was doing the mount, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And then I did the tube thing, and I'm like, ah, I don't know if I dig it. And then I bolted the shock to it, and I'm like, meh, maybe. So I'm going to stare at it for a while and see how much I really dig it. I wish I'd have went a little wider, but, eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it gets cut off or if we roll with it. So anyways, there it is. It is down. It is connected to the link. It's got a couple quarter inch tabs going to the link. My lower link will be sleeved and it's at 10 and a half inches and it's 11 inch shock. So that's probably where I'm going to put my strap right there. 
And then let me show you the front. The passenger side could probably at full stuff gonna be up about another inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And uh, I'd call that, I'd call that pretty decent flex to be honest with you. I think it's gonna work. I made this other shock mount over here. Kind of sort of made it look the same as that one. So that's knocked out. And then I lengthened this pan hard bar. So my buddy gave me one and it was probably to about there. So I cut it off. I used four inches of a one inch solid round bar plug. So I cut it, chamfered the edges, drilled it for plug welds, had to work the uh, that solid slug down. I put it about in here about this far, plug welded it, and then uh, I put this side on. Worked it a little bit more to make this side a little easier so it wouldn't move as much, but still took a bunch of hammering, a little pressing, but we got it. So now we've got pan hard bar, shocks, basically everything. So later on today, I'm gonna put the springs in and we'll just cycle her out and see what happens. Doing a little testing tonight. So I'm doing a like a full stuff test kind of thing. Just uh, checking things out. So I got the spring in here. <clears throat> so as you, you'll recall, I have my little keeper down here. It keeps the spring in place down there. And with it basically at full droop, uh, you know, it's not even touching the, the bump stop. So I dig that, you know. Can push it over and it's still not going to touch it the um, i got a makeshift uh strap there holding it down but that's at 10 inches of travel it's got another inch of travel but you know i i think i can live with that right here so the main thing i wanted to do was test at full bump especially this side to see where if i need to make any adjustments but it's hitting that pad perfect i'd imagine with engine and trans you know it might squish another half inch maybe right and then uh, the shock still got some, so hell yeah, I think it's working out. Now we got links in, we got shocks in, we got springs in, we got a pan hard bar, and I like it. So I'm about 14 and a quarter from axle to frame. I wanted to be 12 and a half, 13. Once we shove drivetrain in here, we're gonna achieve that. We'll probably be, might even sit a little bit lower, but we have adjustments if we need to. I. There's the upper link, lower link. Got the shot going to the lower link. I dig it. No binding. Looks good. I think it's going to work out. And uh, I'm, I'm liking the flex. I think it's going to be all right. You know, we've got a, probably a lot of adjustments we're going to have to make to everything. But I just wanted to show it to you. Hell yeah, we're getting uh, one step closer every night. Just got done wrangling this out the back of the K10 here. So... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just taking a break from working on the front this weekend. I'll knock a bunch of more stuff out. I just got a lot of welding and finishing up to do on stuff and uh, and all kinds of other stuff. But anyhow, so I wanted to get the truss made for the 14 bolt. I figured it'd be a good, just something different to do than just working on the front. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got a truss in mind that I'm going to build and I think it's going to be awesome. So I will, when I get it mocked up, I'll show you, I'll talk to you about it. But for now, I'm going to get cutting off some mounts, clean it up, and get ready for my truss. All right, fellas, here we go. I'm going to show you my truss design. I got it in my head. I drew it out. I think it's going to work out. So we've got two-inch DOM quarter wall. It's going to be sleeved with a one-and-a-half quarter wall just to keep any deflection out because those two links are gonna meet here and it's gonna keep the axle from moving side to side and it's also gonna you know, be putting a lot of stress on it. So no deflection. So basically how it's gonna work is the plate on each side is gonna go like this. So obviously you know you have one on the back side of the axle, one on the front side of the axle like so. And then it'll be boxed up the back side, you know, so it'll go around the axle be boxed all the way up the side, all the way up the inside. So same thing on both sides. And then it's gonna have a pinion bridge, so I'm gonna weld a tab off of it with three bolts, three like half inch bolts, and then it's gonna go right down to the pinion. We got a truss in the works here. And let me tell you a little bit about it. So, got the tube here, got it cleaned up, threw it in the vise. Cut down all my pieces of plate here. So I got four of these identical. There's going to be my uprights. 
on both sides. So I, w I tacked this guy on, and then I clocked it in a position, this other guy, to where it would give us three inches here. That way when we put this plate on, we're gonna have a nice big area to burn around the axle. Same with the inside plate. So right now I'm just sitting here staring at it, and I figured if I built the one side and then made sure like everything was gonna jive and I was happy with it, then it'd be pretty easy to add my uprights over there, so that shouldn't be a big deal. So we'll do this side, we'll do that side, and then we'll start working on our pinion bridge. So more to come tomorrow. Yeah, so what I'm thinking about doing right here. So I basically gotta make four of these. And uh, that's how I'm gonna do them. I think that'll look all right. And then it'll also have a, pull this sucker out. Oh, knocked it down. It'll also have a rib in here. So it'll be boxed on the front, boxed on the back, have a rib in the center. That'll work out. Then up over here, I'm gonna make the bridge and then do a pinion guard. So it's gonna be something like this, you know, probably, you know, you know, cut that down and stuff. But anyways, I think that's gonna, gonna be it. And then I wanna figure out here where I wanna put my bolts, where I wanna put my connection. So if I wanna like do it down here, if I wanna do it up there. So I'll work on that tomorrow and then we'll get to cutting some stuff and we'll make it happen. All right, fellas, here we go. Update for the night. We're turning cardboard into reality here, so it's coming along. So pretty simple design. Got the plate cut all drilled, all that stuff. Took forever. And then I did this one here. So this is going to weld here. It's going to have some nice, you know, gusset on the side. Uh, I got clearance under there. I'm just going to weld bolts up underneath, uh, or sorry, nuts underneath for the bolts. And then... I think I'm gonna work it down just a little bit more to just bring it a little bit lower on the tube. I think I'd like that a little bit better. And then I just need to clean up my three pieces I cut for the pinion guard, so we'll get that on. I still got, you know, make a couple cuts in them so water and stuff can get out of them and stuff. So all my hole saws are kind of burned up, so we'll probably make some triangles on it. But that is about it. So wanted to show you, so probably get out here tomorrow for a little while and we'll make some more happen, but Hell yeah, we're getting it. Got out here, burned the truss on. So I did a pretty slow process on it, you know, here and there, here and there, here and there, but we finally got her all welded up. So uh, everything, everything going. Laid down pretty well, you know, maybe a beat or two I wanna take back, but other than that, she ain't going to go nowhere, you know what I'm saying, son? Anyway, so that is it. So I wanted to get this basically all welded up. That way I can get it up underneath the truck. I ain't going to worry about pieces falling off of it. So put a couple, couple little beads on the axle too just to hold it, keep it from moving. And then after I get everything all tacked and ready to go and mocked up, I'll pull it off and uh, burn, burn it to the tube with the big welder. But hell to the yeah, we're coming along. There she's sitting right now. All right, so here we are on the rear, and I'm going to give you an idea of what I'm going with, and things could change as I'm going through it, but this is basically what I'm thinking. So this is about where the axle is going to sit, obviously, right? And so I want my lower, my lower, I want my lowers to be triangulated as well as the uppers. So what I'm going to do is run a cross member. I've got a big piece of 3 8 that I'm going to run across there and hang my upper and my lower bracket off of that and then brace it with some box tube and then make sure, you know, we're securing to the frame and all that stuff. So that's the plan there. Um, you know, when you think about a four link, the majority of the cost is in rod ends and in making, you know, you know, buying brackets and stuff. But in this case, I bought a four by eight sheet of quarter wall that I made on my brackets or I'm going to be making. So I cut a whole bunch of them and I still got to cut a bunch more and we'll have that covered. All right, so what I'm gonna do, you could end up spending 700 bucks, 800 bucks, more than that, you know, maybe a little bit less on a nice Heim joint uh, with misalignment spacers and all that stuff, you know, the the, the tube uh, bung and all that stuff. So um, you could also go with something like this. What I did on the front at the frame is a poly bushing, right? So it's poly, it's a two inch quarter wall tube 
and uh, it's drilled for a Zerk. But since we're gonna have leftover two, we're gonna have a bunch of this leftover. I went and spent 15 bucks on a set of these. So you get, you know, each box is a set. So we'll do one link. So I ended up buying four of these guys, which will take care of that. So, you know, you what's that? Let's see, 15, 30, you know, 60 bucks on this stuff here. And coincidentally, they're actually for a square body, but we'll do our own. We'll cut the tube, we'll drill it for a Zerk, it'll be awesome. So we got some plumb bobbers chilling. Felt like we should, I wanted to get the axle exactly where I wanted it. So it is centered and it is at 118 inches, the wheelbase. So I ended up moving it back. And so the main, the main reason for moving it back is to get my links where I want them. Another reason was so I can shift my tank cradle up forward and I don't have to worry about this ever making contact with any of that, even if something happened or, you know, I don't know, you know, whatever. And then if my drivetrain happens to get longer, then I don't ever have to fool with the links, you know, like I, I won't have to like build a new cross member or any of that, like it'll just all stay the same. So I've got plenty of room there. And I just think it's going to work out. So we're going to go with that. Everything's centered. Everything's ready to go. Kind of simulated the drive shaft there. So I know, you know, I ain't going to have an issue. And tomorrow we're just going to get burning some links on. I wanted to get you something, let you know where I'm at. And uh, this is uh, really it. So I had to cut that spring hanger off over there. I kind of retained the bottom part just because I want to keep this cross member. So that's what I did. And then I got my... This cross member, which is going to have basically all the links are going to hang off it. So it's going to have the adjustable uppers are going to be chilling like so. I still got to drill all them. I still got to drill my lowers. I got to drill everything. So it's going to be a long process. But every night, you know, we're going to plug away and we're going to make it happen. So that's it. And then, you know, obviously this thing is going to have a frame plate on the outside connected to it. This cross member. So you can see like right here. So it'll have a plate and then connect it all down there and then probably be tied into this cross member box plate bam big old gussets i don't know whatever but it'll hold up and then uh, maybe some ribs across like three or four ribs boxed so and we can cut the bottom for drive shaft clearance but anyways we'll keep rolling so basically what i'm doing now is i'm getting the brackets into position where they're going to be lengthwise so that way i can measure for my link and I'm gonna make all four of these links the same because I'm gonna be running non-adjustable with poly. So basically I bought all the inserts, it's been about 60 bucks and uh, I'm gonna be using the excess tube. So these sleeve into quarter wall, two inch DOM. So that's how I'm doing it. You know what I mean? COVID took all my money and I want four links. So here it is. So basically once I get the length of the tube, I'll build a jig. I will make all the links exactly the same, identical, everything right with them. And then the link will dictate what the actual positioning is of the bracket. So then that way there's no binding and we can get the links in and out fairly easy. So anyways, that's uh, where we're at. All right, here we go. So we are working today. Took last night off, got a good night of sleep, and we're going to bust it hard today to try to get these links done. So cut them down to length. I still need to notch them. And I'm going to cut them with the the chop saw. So I figured this would be the best way just to make sure both sides are even. I just tied a nut to a string. And then I figured if I get this right at the top, it'll hang straight down. And then I can mark it and make my cut. So we'll see what happens. All right. So I made a makeshift jig for my link. So this one was the hardest. This was the first one. So I cut it a little long. I went like 32 and 3 quarters. And I had to cut it down a little bit, like a lot. I had to work it down with a grinder. But if I cut it at, make my lines and cut it at 30 degrees, like it's almost a perfect fit. So on this next one, I'm going to go like 32, 32 inches. But yeah, you can see there it's all tacked in. So next up, I'll pull those bushings out and burn this mofo. And then uh, we'll get the next one going and they should be easier as we go along update for you we got a one link truck here kind of awesome show you the triangulation there i mean it ain't a straight bar by any means i wanted to go more but you know that's where it ended up and you know we'll we'll run it and uh if it don't work we'll cut it off and try again 
I like, uh, I don't know, I sort of like the position of it. I'm going to raise this bracket up just a little bit. Like just, just shift it up a little bit. Um, so right now the link is at like 11 degrees. So if I can get it to like nine-ish, I think we'll be in the, a good ballpark. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And then I'm gonna get the other side on and then start working on the uppers. But <clears throat> you know, everything takes three times as long as I think it's gonna take. So hell yeah, there it is. We'll keep going and see what we can make happen. And then when it's all done, we'll flex test it and see how the poly bushings are going to work out. We got Chevy K truck. It's four linked. I sort of dig it. I think we got some good triangulation on the lowers. I messed with those this morning. I brought the tab up on the axle. And then I was able to like shift them in a little bit more to get a little more triangulation out of them. And I'm sitting about nine degrees on the slope of that lower link. And I think I can live with that. And then these uppers here, there is an adjustment on the bracket. So their front is going to come down a little bit, but I need to trim my cross members so that that way they won't touch. And then, yeah, man, it's just, it's coming along. So we got a bunch of box plates and gussets we got to cut, but... Before I do that, I need to lay some little beads on everything and then run it through the paces and uh, see how she does. But anyways, I'll update you more tomorrow. So rear end's mocked up. I took last night off, came out early this morning, and I did some cardboard engineering for some box plates and some gussets. The cross member, I think it just needs a little bit. I got to put a little bit of thought into it just to make sure it's going to hold. Um, so I've got some stuff figured out, but I'm going to take a little bit more, uh, time on it. I got all my tabs welded on, um, to that, that way I could flex it out for you. So if you want to know what, <laughs> have it all poly in your, you know, on all four triangulated four link, how it'll flex, this is about it. I can stand on this right here. I can make it touch the ground, you know, and you can imagine if you're pushed up on a rock or something, like you're going to get flex out of it. You know, it's not going to. It ain't the greatest, like the front end, it dropped to the ground, you know, but, um, but yeah, so it moves up and down nice and easy. I can go all the way to the ground. I can go all the way up and yeah, it'll work out. You know, it's super budget in the back. I spent 60 bucks on the inserts and basically all of the rod ends are just leftover tube that I use to make the links. So hell to the, yeah, we're going budget on this thing. So then down the road, I'll switch it with Himes and it'll be all good, but you know, the majority of all the work of the build is in all the brackets and everything. And then you reuse all that stuff when you switch to Himes anyways. All right, fellas, word for the night is gussets and box plates. So that's what I've been working on. So I added these guys here. And then I basically just box this whole area in right here. So uppers right there are pretty well taken care of. I might add a couple more beads in a certain places, but that is it. Then I came around. I put some plates on the back of here. Yeah, and then what I'm thinking about for the uppers here, well, actually the cross member, which, ha you know, holds the uppers and the lowers. Obviously, it's going to get burned here. Then I'm going to put a frame plate and then burn it again. <clears throat> but up here, I kind of come up with this. So what this is essentially going to do, this is a 3 16 cross member. It's pretty beefy. So this can tie into the frame and the cross member and my link mount there so it'll basically tie all that together and it should be pretty good but it still needs one more thing so we'll see what happens so down here this is what i'm going to do i'm going to add this plate here it's just tacked for now because i still have to add all my box plates and everything for the truss but the spring is going to sit perfectly right there and with my pinion angle this is nice and flat so i can just kind of add to it and then uh, i'll put some little plates here and it'd be good to go and then i ain't gotta cut that stupid thing off and then up here, I had these left over from there. And I was like, man, reincorporate that into the truck. That would be awesome. And then I put it, I just tacked it up here just to see what it looked like. And I don't dig it. So what I was thinking about doing was just like boxing this area in. But then I think what I'm going to do is just do like this. And then run a big giant triangle down here and have it at, act as the lip. And then probably put some adjusters or something. I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, but... You know, some nights you ain't feeling it. You cut cardboard, it don't work out, and you, know, you do something else. <clears throat> got all my boxing plates, cleaned them all up, got them to fit. 
So I basically, on the inside, I burned the back one. I burned the, you can see where I burned the rib on the side and onto the axle. And this one here, I pretty much burned it up to here. I got to finish welding it. But I needed to put this on because I wanted to do this here for my spring. So this is basically going to be the spring perch right here. And then I'll add some stuff to hold the spring. But that's what I'm working on. And then down here, I'll add some plates that just kind of mimic this right here but it'll go down to the axle and probably touch the truss so you know so that perch is welded to that plate which is welded to the truss so you know that sort of extends the truss a little bit further so i don't know i think it'll work we made a lot of progress so we got some lower spring perches we got the, our upper thing here i still got to work on i'm going to trim it down and box it in and uh you know i got some more work to do on it but they'll they'll work you know and then you can see sitting on the spring. So I actually have the whole truck sitting on springs front and rear earlier. And uh, these rear springs are too freaking long. So my buddy's got a bunch of extra pairs, so he's gonna swap them out. So if I get the right height, then we'll be in good shape. A little bit more welding on the rear. Got to add some, some little plates on the uh, lower tabs down here. Then we're gonna get on cross member. So I'll work on that this week. Try to get the rear end basically knocked out. Uh, start putting it together and uh, get some wheels on it and then we got to move to the front I got to pull a bunch of stuff off add some plates weld everything and then after that I got to tackle the steering box I got to box it all in and hell yeah we'll keep going and the word of the night is cross member here so that's what we're doing so I added this two by two 120 wall box tubing across the top because it needed some more strength we got to keep the deflection out I had some other stuff in mind, but the box tube, you know, it's easy to deal with and you know it's strong. So I went with that, added a bridge here to the cross member. I added, started burning in my top plates, you know, didn't want to go too much tonight. And so that ties frame to cross member to crossbar to my upper brackets there. So I'm not really foreseeing an issue. I don't think this thing's going to move around. Now, my drive shaft's going to be close to touching this uh, step bumper piece thing that I used. If in the event that it looks like it's gonna touch and I gotta cut the middle out of it, then I'll box this front and rear, then put some little plates down here, but you know what I mean? And so then, you know, it'll be kind of slanted, sort of like the truss. So anyways, that's it, we'll keep rolling. Got the springs I got, I think these are TJ lift springs. They're like a dual rate action and uh, they feel pretty good actually. It's like, so this is me just like pushing down on it. So lot softer than the other springs, and I think they're actually going to work out pretty well. And I think the position that I have them in is going to be perfect at ride height. So we're going to roll with it. We'll see what happens. Uh, tonight, also laid down some more beads. Just got a lot of finished welding to do. You know, it takes a while. It's kind of tired, but I walk by the truck, and it's like, mofo, you better come out here and build on me. So I'm like, all right. So I did. And then plasma these suckers out. Uh, so these are basically to protect the tabs from... Uh, the rocks beating on it and then uh, ties everything together then you run a big fat beat on the axle and then uh, makes it even stronger so you know one thing to think about when you're building a rock crawler here is that you know you're gonna get hung up on this stuff and one day you have to winch over some nasty stuff and all the weight of the vehicle is gonna be up on one of those mounts and you're gonna be pulling on it and dragging it and uh, so if you think you need an extra gusset or to box something in then uh, you should probably do it so uh yeah so tomorrow i'm gonna lay some fat beads on all this stuff weld the truss to the axle and then we'll be pretty much done with the rear end i still gotta you know obviously assemble it add some plates here but we're gonna keep pushing ran it in and hit it with a big hobart i wanted to make sure i brought plenty of heat on the tube you know not my finest work but it's holding metal together so it's gonna work so basically i wanted to make sure i got that tube hot enough since it's uh you know half inch so I burned these guys on and um, the lower mounts. So I burned the plate that I made and all that stuff. So that is done. Going to get it up in here, put it at full bump this weekend, figure out what I'm going to do with the bumps, and then also work on shock mounts and probably drive line, get that stuff knocked out. I just got a little bit of finish welding around these edges and stuff to do. And then uh, rear end's coming along. In the front... Still got to do box plates for the uh, power steering box and basically just do a whole bunch of finish welding and then we can get started doing some other stuff up here. So we're getting there.
Fred for Valentine's Day, right? Happy Valentine's Day, K10. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, this weekend it's just been uh, welding, welding, and more welding on lowers in the front and the cross member and stuff like that. So yeah, it took up a lot of time. And then I had to have the links out anyway, so I figured I'd shoot some color on them. So that's basically going to be the theme, I guess. You know, I'm going to do red links and a couple of the red things. And then, uh, you know, we'll reshoot the frame black. And then the cab and everything is going to be white. So we're going to rattle can it in true Dick's 4x4 fashion. But it'll come out. And so it's at full bump now. I've been working on shocks. This shock, I bought this for the truck a long time ago when I figured I'm going to use them. But they got like 13 inches of travel. And uh, I want to try to put them on here without making a hoop. So I think I've kind of got that worked out. So I'm going to get going on that today. And I will show you how it comes out. I got my shock mounts done, so what do you think of them suckers? I don't really feel like I needed to burn the crap out of them. Just to put some beads in some strategic places, and I think we're all good. So, you want to see how it flexes on the poly? There you go. So, we got about, we're using about 11 and a half inches right there. Oops, sorry. 11 and a half. And uh, I can put a little weight on it and make it go down. I could go down even more and then yeah i thought those came out pretty well now i gotta work on bumps let me show you this side excuse the mess i got these tires weighing things down back here but then there's that so wait basically where i put them is i put them to where they'll bottom out before my links hit that cross member right there but bump is going to keep keep everything away so it should be good so a little more on the mount here show it to you see what it show you like the, what the back side looks like so basically just a couple triangle gussets then a piece of plate and then these guys so basically i had four of these that i was going to use and uh i ended up not needing them so i ended up all four of these so basically this is one of these cut in half it worked out well you know what i'm saying so i might just round off these corners maybe put a little plate there i don't really think it needs it but you know this is kind of long so i might put a little plate right there and uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's all quarter, you know, it's just a freaking shock. It ain't a coil over or anything. And then down here, I just retained the the original mount. And so I mounted it to where it's it's pretty close to the bottom of the tube. It may hang down like just a scotch, you know what I mean? But it's all good. And then, uh, you know, I'll uh, finish burden the other sides and then I'll just spray it black. And you never know, it's all old and rusty. So hell to the yeah. We got shocks. We got bumps. So I was thinking about a way to do the bumps. I was going to make something that came off the frame, kind of tied the upper and lower together. And then I was like, you know what? We got springs and all this stuff going on. Let's just do a cross member. So I did. I had this tube laying around. So once I get outside, I'll clean it and everything, paint it. But I figured it would add some strength to the area and it'd make it easier to put the bumps off of it. So bumps are hanging over a little bit. I'm going to make like a sliding hole because they need to be slid over a little bit. So then these should be even with this. But I had these. I had that cut a circle for something. And I was like, man, that'll be perfect. They'll look like, sort of look okay. So anyways, yeah, a couple of gussets. Make it to where it can be adjustable front and back. And we'll be good to go. So hell to the yeah. So we're going to move on to driveline and finishing up the rear. And then we'll get busting on this sucker. Three weeks, we'll make it happen. First dilemma of the night. You know, I've been deciding, do I want to go disc? Do I want to go drum? You know, I got these. These are the big guys. The uh, I think they're like 13 inches or something. They're they're the biggest ones I think, and uh, they stopped well. And I just got done rebuilding these really before I switched to disc on the other truck. And I'm like, man, what do I want to do here? You know? And I'm like, I think ultimately I want a park brake. You know, that's the main thing. So getting a park brake because you know you ever have a truck run away on you, you'll be like, all right, maybe I should go with a park brake plus. Got my kids and stuff, so park brake's important. Now, the dilemma is you want to pull all that stuff to pull your link out every single time? I don't know. You know, that's my dilemma, so I'm going to sit here and think about it. We'll figure it out. Well, I went over to the other truck and looked to see what the clearance was because, you know, you got to, instead of having a big old drum set up, you'd have the rotor there, and I realized that the rotor probably have to come off too to remove the bolts. So 
it's the same way either way so i'm going to stick with my drums here because i want the park break so you know these are <laughs> sort of some of the things you know keep in mind before you start welding tabs to the axle but i like the placement that's where it's going to go and if i gotta add an extra you know 15 20 minutes to uh a job you know pulling the bolt out you know i mean it is what it is right i mean it'd be nice to just pop out the link but you know typically when you're doing it you know you're going to have it on stands and the weight off of it anyways and popping that off ain't going to be that big of a deal so it is what it is you know what i'm saying just those are the compromises really right yeah yeah just shot it with black and uh you know it goes kind of cool with the links i mean it looks gonna look way better in this video than it actually is and i'm okay with that because probably the only reason i painted it was for the gram anyway so hell to the yeah but anyways i finished welding it all the truss and stuff so everything on it is pretty much done welded i may need to add a thing or two but that's it and uh so tomorrow i'm gonna get going get all my backing plates on so we can set the sucker on the ground and then i'll uh reassemble everything and we'll get to rolling on something else but yeah the axle's going together so i got it chilling on one wheel here just to kind of see what it looks like i don't know it looks okay on a 33 it really needs a 37 but you know I ain't got them right now so yeah so really suspect because the axle actually went together fairly easy like really no hiccups which means that something's gonna go wrong but everything actually feels really good all I got to do is put the yoke on slip that axle in over there and we're good to go so I've been wanting to work on these suckers so I came out tonight I cut them down to where it wasn't just a flat piece took like a one inch strip of quarter and uh, just kind of connected a bunch of little pieces. And initially I wasn't feeling it, but the voice inside of my head was just like, burn it and let's see what happens. So I did, and I think it came out all right. So I could probably grind on it for days and make it prettier, but we're just going to paint it black and run it. Up here, I still got to box it in, cut these even with the frame. So we'll work on that this weekend, see what we can figure out. And then my bump stops here. I got working on those, so I added the gussets to them, kind of burned everything in. I made it to where this is a sliding hole so I can actually, you know, make some fine adjustments on it to make sure it's hitting the top of the truss. And I think we're going to be all right. Tonight, man, you know, if these old trucks could talk, you know, you got to wonder what they'd say. They'd probably be like, man, I was so tired of John Cougar Melon Camp that I could scream. Anyway, so we're back over here. This is what I come up with. It's sort of looking at it now. It kind of looks like a hood ornament off an old Buick. However, I didn't really feel like the boxing it in would look that good. So I just did this. So I just did this long gusset, and then I did these little side gussets. Pro tip from a non-pro, cut your stuff down, and you got a bunch of extra gussets. So hell to the yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to burn these all around, and I like them because it's got a big flat area that sits up against the frame. So I'm almost done with the one on the other side. So knock these out real quick tonight, and then we'll get moving on to boxing the front. We'll make this thing happen. Ah, right, fellas, thanks for joining me on this one. We're going to wrap this one up here, and then I'm going to have one more video of this series that'll be coming out in, I don't know, hopefully a week or so. But uh, it'll kind of have all the wrap-up of, you know, how we got the truck on the road. So stick around for that. I appreciate you guys. You liked the video. Give it a thumbs up, and I will catch you guys on the next one.